literacy system. Uh, and it's now time to disband the INEC and reconstitute INEC in line with UWE's recommendation. Um, so, uh, the, a few months ago, I gave a speech at the IPAC lecture series where I, I talked about the role of judiciary in the Nigerian election. And I mentioned that um, in Nigeria, the only valid strategy for winning election, like I get that term, is to bribe INEC, I made that point clear, to bribe the judiciary and commandeer the security. Now, recent events um, seem to prove that right. Today, I want to warn Nigerians again that our beloved country is marching towards the principle uh, on account of the reckless manipulation of elections, which has got worse with every electoral cycle since 2015, at least. By this press conference, I want, I want to make, want to wake Nigerians from slumber, to wake the political class from slumber across all political divides, to recognize the danger that the current brazen manipulation of elections in Nigeria poses to both governance and the survival of democracy in Nigeria, and to take radical actions to save the country from the depletion of flawed, rigged, and manipulated elections. In that IPAC speech, I concluded that the trinity of corrupt INEC officials, corrupt INEC, corrupt judicial officials, and suborned security officials, have that trinity has destroyed the credibility of our election. I also argued in that lecture that INEC's criminal refusal to follow the law that it enacted that was what ruined the 2023 presidential election. Right from when Justice himself from the Supreme Court noted that the 2007 presidential election, which Boyle contested, and went to court, that Supreme Court justice says that it was a sham. Right from that time, 2007, Nigerians have refused to progress on reforming, re-reform of the electoral system. Now, it's important to point out, when we talk about electoral reform, the Electoral Act is not flawed. The Nigerian Electoral Act has several provisions that can guarantee free and fair election. What is fundamentally flawed is the Nigerian Electoral Management Body. That's the problem. And that's so, so that we don't go back and say we're doing an electoral reform, and then assembly will come and uh, uh, dot I and T uh, and substitute B for C. All those peripheral rearrangement of electoral act. That's not the point. The point is that the mode of election or appointment or appointment of the electoral management body condemns is to partisanship. And it's important to highlight that when Gerard Duan lost his election in 2007, when he won the election and won the Supreme Court, narrow four to five, five to four majority, narrow, he was gracious enough to concede that the election that brought him to power was very flawed. As a good man, he put together a panel of Nigerian best scholars, including Bola Jakiyemi, Chief jurists, including the former Chief Justice Ways, religious leaders, including Father, uh, then Reverend Father Kuka, he put the body together and they came with a set of recommendations. The high point of that recommendation in, was that henceforth, Nigeria should reconstitute the electoral management board in two forms. First, that the appointment of the chairman and deputy chairman that recommended that the commissioners, if you're the, the, the executive commissioners, should not be done by a president, should go through competitive bidding, meaning that the National Judicial Council will advertise people, candidates who are competent, defined by criteria of experience, character, and demonstrated competence, will apply. The NJC, which is not a partisan political body, would screen those candidates and present them to the Council of State. So for each of those positions, chairman, deputy chairman and commissioners, they get like three persons. And the Council of State, including the governors, the president and the former president, will recommend straight to the National Assembly for confirmatory hearing. Now what that does is first, 
the appointment goes through a process which guarantees to the person who is appointed that he got there by a, a meritorious process. So he's not beholden to either the president or the former governor or the minister or the former minister who nominated him. He applied for a job, got screened, got recommended, got confirmed by Senate. That was a game changer. And that aligns with how electoral management bodies are constituted elsewhere. The West comment, uh, report also recommended that the second feature of that electoral management body will be representations on that commission of NLC, the Labour has recommend, a representative, the Bastion, Nadia Bastion has a recommend, a representative, you know, of journalists, women association. Now, these groups will nominate to the NJC as well, candidates. NJC will, will, will scrutinize, review their qualification, and recommend also for the appointment. So you have two features that are important for the integrity of the electoral management body. One is that the persons appointed are not beholden to politicians who have run election before them. Two, that as a wider stakeholder, including persons with disability, so you create a stakeholder commission, and then decision making becomes subject to more intense deliberation. All governments, Yeradua died before he could implement it, and Jonathan did not implement it. In fact, Prince Jonathan, when he left office, also lamented that it was a mixed opportunity. He now agrees that we shouldn't be allowing presidents appoint electoral commissioners. It is important to understand that all elections we've had since then have been elections that incumbents have won with a lot of demonstrated, reported manipulation. In fact, in some cases, like in 2023, INEC itself shut down the only device that could help us have credible results. So, the essence of this press conference is to say that our elections have continuously gotten worse, and the augurs for 2027 is, is bad and bleak. We have, since 2023, we now have an INEC that has become more partisan. When, for example, the recent electoral commissioner in Edo State admits that he's a cousin, not just a cousin, a politically active cousin, having served with his brother in government. We've had chief of staffs, clearly partisan persons appointed. So the INEC today has become twice more partisan than in 2023. And so the question is, why are opposition parties, the PDP, the Labour Party, the SDP, the other parties, really not seeing the danger that the most urgent work to do now is to reconstitute INEC, truncate the tenure of the existing commissioners, recreate INEC in the light of what is a reasonable, intelligent proposition by Uwe's committee. So I, 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 I'm surprised and disgusted that instead of opposition leaders, including Mr. Peter Obi, including Atiku Obaga, focusing on how to radically restructure INEC and create a credible empire, they are busy running over the world talking about how to become president. They do election, and we don't care. The school does not really care about who won the election. We don't care about the candidate the party that won. We care about the integrity of the electorate, because we know that flawed elections are precursors to instability and to bad governments and other development. You look at our neighbors across West Africa, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger. We had issues with Guinea, where we said alone. Why did these countries fall back into military rule? Simple, flawed election. And Nigeria is accelerating towards a very criminal electoral process. The, all the political parties and all the observers, including IAGA, including civil society, have issued a report that is very clear that even the results collated were widely different from results posted real time on the IRF. Now, 
There is no difference between the pattern of the 23 election, which is that IRF was discontinued, and the pattern in real sense of what happened in the door. And we are now hearing of a script, of a methodology for future elections. So the school feels that at this point, there should be a pause to go back and recreate the INEC that can deliver. I mean, it's not only Mahmoud, Mahmoud uh, what's his name? Yakubu's. Oh, people can demonize him as a person. That's not the point. Is that you run a risk of having a electoral body that has is badly constituted in terms of politicians appointing. And Nigerian politicians are desperate for power. The, 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 the contest for power is all consuming. Why? Because political power in Nigeria gives access to economic wealth and gives access to everything. So, so Nigeria is not a place where you have political self-restraint. Nigeria is not a place where politicians have the opportunity to appoint umpires for election and will appoint honest, non-partisan people. The only person who made a mistake of appointing somebody who does not have his brief to do election for him was Jonathan, and he was punished. So why are we so naive to assume that persons appointed by incumbents to be in electoral officers, whether as resident commissioners or natural commissioners, will deliver free and fair election? This level of naivety and criminal conspiracy of the ruling class is dangerous for the future of this country. So what Abuja School is saying that we have the opportunity right now to use the pens and that gun is around a new state election. To now take a national stand as a people that we want to save ourselves of further agonies down the line by today. And it's simple to do. How do we truncate this INEC? Very simple. If all the opposition leaders, parties that have more numbers, majority in the National Assembly, today brings a motion, that motion will amend the constitution and end this INEC. And, we, and, and create a different INEC. And then the staff in INEC will be now divided between always recommended two, three things. One, three agencies. INEC will manage the election. We should have a party registration and management commission whose job is to manage primaries, political parties, and other. And we should have an electoral crime commission. Today, is reports of violation of electoral laws, commission of crimes, cannot be investigated and punished. It's only Mike Guinea who successfully prosecuted a professor, return officer, in Akwaibo and jailed him. Today, Mike Guinea is all the credible electoral officers in INEC. Okay, Bano, Mike Guinea, the other guy from Sokoto, they don't have, if they make mistake and appoint a credible person, and many of them are appointed by Jonathan, by the way, if they appoint a credible person, his tenure will be truncated. He will not have a second term. There's now a natural selection of independent, honest umpires and the crowding in of partisans to manage the Nigerian election. We can pretend that's not going to give you. In 2027, we'll take me to court or take me to any panel to explain. The judiciary does not. And by the way, Afro Barometer, which is the leading measure of perception in Africa, in fact, the world is rated highly, rates lack of trust in the judiciary and the INEC 75%. So meaning 75% of Nigerians do not have any confidence. So it's not Sam Amadi speaking. The people have no confidence in the judicial board. So, so the idea, and you can see that in spite of the campaign, only 24% or so voted in the door, in spite of local election. It tells you that we are, go we are running into an era of self-help. Of, of, of political violence, where people don't trust the umpire. And so as a patriot, I call upon the National Assembly, I call upon Mr. President himself, the Buddha School says, Mr. President, the legislators, Atuka Ubaka, Pitobi, all those who show whether everybody who cares about the future of this country, everybody who's paying about the outcomes in the do and several places. And by the way, on the PDP said, don't try it with us. I mean, what kind of thing? You are now Election is not like a warfare. Some people, some people and say, don't try what happened to do, you know, that's the word, official line of it on the PDP. Say, don't try this. Why should we have elections where they can't even trust the umpire to deliver free and fair elections? So the Abuja School position is very simple. We can help draft that law. It's a very simple law. You amend the constitution, you, you, you truncate the tenure of this INEC, 
you create a new INEC in the simple way that Wales has told us, which is simple. That the NJC, people apply to be chairman, people apply to be commissioner, NJC screens them, I recommend to Council of States, a multi-layered non-partisan body. And the, it's not the president, they, and, they, and they would send the nominees to Senate for confirmation. And, and so, why are we doing this? We are doing this because any deep look at Nigerian politics will convince you that the country is superficially stable. Underneath, the country is destabilized. Nigeria needs a moment of rebuilding. And that moment starts with reducing the incidence of violence. And it started with rebuilding trust. And that trust starts with electoral system. Because the idea, the only beauty, political scholars can tell, the only virtue of elections over non-election is that election is a peace building process mm -hmm. mechanism. It's a conflict management mitigation avoidance mechanism. So when people have confidence in the electoral process, they go home and say, well, let them rule. But when they have no confidence, they work to undermine. And so it's in the interest of the political elites right now to recognize that the country is almost becoming ungovernable. We just moved from end bad governance protests. Already we've seen sitting blocks of the October, what do you call it? Fearless in October. We're going to have these conflicts endlessly, and those, these conflicts do not help economic and political governance. As a, go, as, a gov, as a development scholar myself, I can tell you, like I was telling my colleagues, you need more than 120% attention to move a poor country, forget rhetoric. To get Nigeria out from where we are now to somewhere 20% better will require us to commit almost 100 plus attention to development. Now, when you're using 80% of that attention to arrest critics, to rig election, suppress violence, um, uh, so called conflict in political parties, uh, because you don't have credible electoral management system, how will you get the resources and attention to drive development? So, the Abuja School really wants to send this as a call to all political parties, to all political leaders. We, we heard that the former political leader, leaders um, met a few, a few days ago thinking about Nigeria. We want to challenge them to meet again and think about action plan to get this INEC truncated. This INEC can never deliver free and fair election. Uh, and it's a national self-deception and a tragedy if our political leaders Continue to invest in the infrastructure of re election without investing in changing this INEC into the tenure and sacking all those commissioners and creating a new INEC within the Wales report. And time is there, we have time. And this can happen in less than one year. If we waste time, then time runs out on Nigeria. And that would be pathetic. Thank you. Any questions, other contributions? In the the problem with Nigerian political analysis is that they attribute a lot of goodness to political actors. I don't. Political actors, I said in my viral IPAC lecture that politicians are mad dogs who ought to be policed by police dog, mad police dog. The regulator, so Tinubu is a politician and they die in the wood politician. And what that means in our parlance is a man who can anybody who can do anything to get power. So what that speech is not is not really untypical. Emiloko is in the same line. Grab it, smash it in the same line. If the people was not there, maybe APC, PDP president can say the same thing. Maybe Labour Party can say the same thing. Maybe in much more guarded manner. I want Nigerians to keep our eyes on the ball. The ball is, as long as you have INEC, we are the president, and my, by the way, the tenure of the chairman will expire soon. The tenure of some of these commissioners will expire soon. With the example that Tinubu has shown in the first appointment he has made, where he appointed, no, sh this, is not, this is not about you know, trying to play the good boy. There's no good boy here. They're going to pack that place with ultra partisans. And I'm talking about partisans who open their chest and say, we are partisans. Just like the guy in Edo says, he's my cousin. But he didn't say, you know what? I recuse myself for this election. Since you guys have made it an issue, I have no idea of rigging or anything. You know what? I take a leave for two, two days. 
Somebody else should do it. That's what somebody. But, but these guys are hyper partisans. They don't want to say that. So we are entering into a terrible time. I, I'm not missing my word. Nigeria is entering into a period where is the sort of democracy will be tested. And the only way of a wise man is to pull back from the precipice. Is that not so? Before you fell headlong. So Tinubu saying A or B doesn't matter at this point. For me, and my colleagues can make their point, but for me, what matters is solving problems. And I can see that the problem starts first with creating an INEC where the commissioners are not directly beholden to you. They, they can, I mean, every system is corruptible, but you don't create already corrupted system. You create a system that can resist corruption and then strengthen it with advocacy, with rhetoric, with advice. But you don't create a corrupt criminal entrap system. A system where the president appoints the man who determines the election. In today's night, this is not about Tinubu, Jonathan himself when he left office, said this should be a minimum because he was a different kind of politician. I appointed somebody, said I want a credible man who I won't control. Of course, the reason why Jonathan lost election was that the, the then INEC chairman didn't want to help him for whatever reason, integrity, whatever. But we don't expect that the, the confluence of forces that made Jonathan not able to man manipulate INEC may not exist now. Nigeria should be historical. That's it. That was the period where a section wanted it out by all means. Uh, and they saw somebody who was capable, courageous, to say no, the no deal. And he lost. But today, with the way INEC is now, this INEC and the way that emerge after this election, with the tenure of this man lives, cannot, has no capacity to say no. And we shouldn't deceive ourselves. We should end this INEC and create the one that Bola. Akinyemi and others, who ways, these are not Labour Party or Showere or Nance or Samamadi or Abuja School people. These are, these are, these are Nigerian mm -hmm. stakeholders, eminent, cut across. In fact, they had traditional rulers, many judges, conservatives, nationalists, patriots. They say the way out is, I need to, let's stop using the word independent for a commission that are appointed by people, uh, uh, partisans. Commission, where the members are card carry members of political parties. There's nothing dependent about it. So I don't know whether they would like to have on that point. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. For me, I'm, I'm looking at the crisis we have from the political economy point of view. As we speak now, there are plans ongoing at the National Assembly for constitutional reforms to amend the electoral act and all those. Billions of Naira are going to be spent on that exercise. Meanwhile, a partisan INEC that is beholden to politicians of the ruling party and other political parties as well will remain intact and nothing will change. So we are wasting a lot of resources in conducting these shambolic elections that are not transparent, that are not free, and our citizens and voters alike are also shifting away from the ideal form of democracy. As our director has spoken, we have seen cases where about 75 to 80 percent of Nigerians don't trust the judiciary, do not trust INEC, and do not trust the National Assembly. Our National Assembly has not been independent and act as a body that is supposed to checkmate the other arms of government. So we have a crisis at hand. Look at Senegal. Senegal was able to have a crisis, but because of the institutions Senegal had, it was able to come out from those crises. And the crisis in Nigeria have been piling up for over some, like two years now. We've continued to see protests, and our political elites are behaving as if nothing is, is happening. We have a very huge crisis that might spark a big fire that will consume Nigeria if our electoral system is not well taken care of. There's a nexus between development and elections. You can see they are showing on social media now that our airports are empty. It is the consequences of elections that is triggering all these crises based on policies and all those things. If Nigeria is not able to fix its electoral process before 2027, we are sorry, we might not be able to predict what will happen to Nigeria. This is, this, these are clear cases. And from what has happened in Edo, and what transpired 
and the shenanigans that INEC displayed in 2023 elections, there is a clear court case that our political leaders are not in tandem with what is happening. They do not envisage the building crisis that is coming up. So for this school, we are pointing out it, this is like a call to action for the Nigerian stakeholders. Patriot, even like our director has said, the former leaders should come together, religious bodies, everybody should focus on INE. If we continue to do all this window dressing, constitutional amendment in the National Assembly, or electoral ad, or whole conferences here and there, without bundling INEC, without disbanding INEC, and reconstituting an, an independent, in the real sense, not this um, rhetorical kind of um, name that is given to INEC as independent. INEC is not independent, it's partisan, it's not even partisan, it's hyper-partisan. That is the peak of partisanship that is beholden to political office holders. So we need to reset INEC. And if we are not able to do that before 2027, we might not be able to tell what will happen to this country. Thank you. For me, uh, this is a wake-up call by the Abuja School, and it's a timely one for that matter. And then for me, the Edo Goba election and its outcome have again reinforced the notion, and rightly so, that our politicians are not ready to change. Our leaders are not going to change. What that means is that it leaves the responsibility on the laps of the masses. So the masters of this country had better realize that this is a challenge that we must surmount. And for us to surmount it, we must find the nerve to pick up the gauntlet and say what's at stake is our collective destiny as a people. What that also means is that Charles Colton was right when he said that liberty is a blessing, though a blessing that is a blessing that must be earned before it can be enjoyed. So that places a huge obligation on the part of the people of Nigeria to realize that the question how they raise themselves to liberty requires action, it requires active participation, it requires eternal vigilance, it requires interventions such as this. So Abuja School of Thought has now taken it upon itself to lead this crusade. We are urging other critical stakeholders across board to please let this echo reverberate across the land so that the right thing should be done. And that right thing, of course, should take root or find root in the OAS report. Thank you. I think it's important, very more important than who wins. You know, people don't understand that um, um, in many cases, process is more important than outcome. If you follow the right process, even if you don't have the right outcomes, you have enough stability to make better choices. So, the Abuja School is saying that anybody, if you look at the report by Yaga, if you look at the report by Solution Room, MBA, if you look at PDP, now, for the governor of PDP, a governor of a state, Fintry, Fintry Adamawa, to have gone ahead, basically, technically, if you argue, breaking the rules, if you like, to announce the result, was because they had no confidence in the electoral body. To announce the result, ostensibly, report data on the IRF. So why would you continue to have elections where parties credibly don't have confidence in the umpire. And why do these parties, PDP, in 2019, Atiku Abubakar ran and claimed to have won. And they said, Sava, 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 Sava. INEC went and played their game, they didn't say no Sava, OK? 2023, PDP lost, Labour Party lost. And they said, IRF was shut down, IRF, 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 IRF. And I came and said, well, we, we say we're going to IRF, we change our mind. I mean, it was the most hopeless thing I've heard anybody say. A regulator's work and primary commitment is to protect his work. And the regulator says, you know what, I choose to play the fool. What's your business? And the court says, damn, you are right, you can be a fool. That's crazy. After all these things, you continue to invest confidence. Because, and let me tell you what it is, is that Nigerian politicians are all riggers. They hope that somehow, somebody has given them a false hope that don't worry, next time we'll work for you. 
That's why any man who wants to feel fairness, and I challenge maybe a few, I, I don't think Nigerian politicians, they just want to win. And they have their prisoners of hope that so someday INEC will work for us. Because each of them have agents in INEC who they think can deliver for them. So it's not even about the ruling party. It's not about the ruling party. We saw before APC came under President Bassanjo when Morrissey ran a very useless elections. I mean, comparable. Maybe some people think his, his elections were worse than Mahmoud. Where we saw it in Anambra, for example, where different people, different slate of candidates, different slate of winners. Horrible. This is my neck. Uh, this is my neck. So it is not about APC. It's about a collective commitment to do the wrong thing that has their consequence for development. As today, I'm not a member of any political party. And even if I'm a member of a party, I don't care about it. I am, I am a man born to say the truth independently. So this is not about APC or PDP or Labour. It's about, if you do analysis of all the electoral reform, elections we've done from 20, 20, 2007, we, so for, say it's a sham, 2011, baboons and monkeys everywhere, the country almost collapsed, we survived. Eh? 2015, Jonathan, the peacenik, and the weak man, they call him, considered and went away. 2029, Sava, Sava, Sava. 2023, now, Edo owned is, every drama comes in, and everything points to the fact that the INEC is the root cause of this crisis, whether for PDP or APC. So, the Nigerian school says, why, for how long should we continue? to suffer and direct. When we have a clear path, the ways report, that's easily implementable. I raise this issue with leaders of the human rights community, the, 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 the CS, CSOs who want the election. Well, I don't like to talk against them, but many of them are embedded in INEC. But I've said it clear. They won after this election. I said, this man INEC is doable. I appoint a certain administrator to take over the administration of INEC staff. You get the point? Make the new law. Appoint according to Ways recommendation where the president of the country should not appoint umpires to determine his election. And the president of a country that has a history of recklessness, this country has a history of lawlessness, recklessness, abuse of power, abuse of procedure, including the all powerful passengers who did well. People say did well, but this has happened under his rule. Manipulations have been part of our electoral landscape. So why continue? So Abuja School is saying, this is an opportunity, instead of worrying about, yes, Edo should go to court, people should go to court, maybe Akpata should go to court, we don't care. But what we care now is bring all this anger together, bring this annoyance, bring it together, to end INEC today. Let all these guys walk home, they have had enough. Let's create a new INEC that can deliver. And Abuja School will continue to monitor the outcome. If we don't do this in 20, 2027, Abuja School will call another press conference to lament and pray that Nigeria does not go on in flames. Nigeria was stronger in 2020. Nigeria is weaker in every sense today. Less united, more disunited, poorer in economics, poorer in everything, more insecure. So why are you putting more fire? by deliberately walking into an electoral landmine with an agency commission that's going to fail you again, 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 and again. Thank you. Thanks.